Hey there folks, this is Mr. Los. Today I want to talk about the mole. Uh, introduce it to you, we may have talked about it a little bit in class before, but we're going to really dig right into the mole here and figure out exactly what it is that we're talking about. And, oh I forgot, there's my little mole guy. Yeah, hi. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, so what is the mole? And again, you know, I think by this point, I've probably mentioned it before, but let's just make sure that we understand. Um, a mole is a word that stands for a number of things. Probably the biggest thing that people do with the mole is they kind of overthink it. Um, that's all it is. It's a word that stands for a certain number of things. Um, dozen, that's another word that stands for a number of things. Dozen stands for 12. You could have a gross, which is a dozen dozen, that's 144. Um, so, you know, there's a several things in the English language, or there's words that stand for a number of things, and mole is one of them. The difference is, mole it just happens to be a really, really big number. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. It's a number of things. Whatever it is you're talking about, it doesn't matter. It's, a, it's that many of that thing. So it could be anything. It could be a, a mole of eggs, a mole of whatever. It's called Avogadro's number, um, after the guy who's kind of one of the early chemists who worked with gases mostly. I have a picture of, oh, so yeah, it's a large amount. It's a really large amount. Uh, but I have a picture here. Let's see old Avogadro. There he is. Great picture. Look at him all. Uh, looking back over his shoulder, he's like, hey! Um, <laughs> I don't know if he was the most handsome fellow. Um, maybe that's a bad picture. I, you know, who knows? But um, that number is so big that it's really hard for the human mind to kind of wrap our brain around just how big that number is. Uh, you know, we just can't. We can't really comprehend a number that big. Six point zero two times ten to the twenty third. Just to give you some perspective, if you had a mole of pennies, it would cover the earth a quarter mile deep. Um, so those pennies, we may, we may or may not have discussed this fact before, but if everyone took those pennies, so everyone on Earth takes their pennies, you split those pennies among everyone on Earth, you give them an equal share, and then they start spending their money at the rate of a million dollars a day, it would take each person 2,356 years to spend all of their cash. So a mole is a big, big, big number. Um, another fun fact, suppose I stacked just pieces of paper, regular rolled, like, computer printer paper. I stacked up a mole of those papers. That stack would go to the sun and back 200 million times. So not only would it reach the sun and back, it would reach the sun and back 200 million times if you could somehow stack paper up to the sun. Um, and that's assuming the paper is 0.1 millimeter thick, which is a, a pretty good assumption. Okay, so molar mass. Molar mass is, if I had that many, if I had 6.2 times 10 to the 23rd things, what would it weigh? What would its mass be? So it's the mass of one mole of an element or compound, and it happens to be the same as the mass on the periodic table. And in fact, that's why that number was picked. That number was picked, the 6.2 times 10 to the 23rd number was picked so it would work out that way. Um, just a couple things because the mole is a super important concept in chemistry, and I, I want us to really think about it in a lot of different ways and, and really try to wrap our brains around it. Um, again, a mole is just a number of things, just like dozen. So take a dozen, a dozen eggs, a dozen bowling balls. It's both 12 things. So I could, have a, I could have a dozen eggs, a dozen bowling balls. It's both 12 things, but what's not the same is their mass. Their mass would be way, way, way different. So the elements of the periodic table are the same way. Um, here's an example, take the element helium, take the element neon. We could have a mole of each. We could have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd helium atoms. We could have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd neon atoms. Um, so the number of atoms would be the same, but the mass would not. Helium weighs about, would weigh about 4 grams, and neon about 20 grams, probably a little over, actually. Don't worry about the 22.4 thing for right now. We'll talk about that later. Um, and as I mentioned, it's the same as the mass in the periodic table. So, like they were just saying, this number here 
one mole of any element, this number at the bottom tells us the mass of that. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd helium atoms weighs about 4 grams. Um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd silver atoms weighs about 107.87 grams. Quite a bit more. Silver atoms are a lot bigger than helium atoms. Um, radium, even heavier. A mole of radium atoms weighs about 226 grams. The very lightest element is hydrogen. A mole of hydrogen atoms weighs only one gram. So it's the same number of things. It's 6.2 times 10 to the 23rd things. It's just the masses are different. Um, and that's kind of what molar mass means. So a port, an important scale, something you're going to do just so, so much, is calculating molar masses. And it's, it's really simple. Okay, take NaCl. By the way, you need your periodic table handy and a calculator, and if you don't have either one of those things, you're going to want to pause it and grab that now, because I need you working along with me as we do this. So I'm going to do a couple examples, and you're going to do some. Um, if I want to know the, ma the molar mass of NaCl, if I want to know the mass of one mole of NaCl particles, all I do is look up both Na and Cl on the periodic table. So, going back to the previous page a little bit, here's Na, uh, here's Cl. A good rule of thumb, I think, is to round two digits past the decimal. I think that's a thing that's um, uh, it's a handy way, and it'll, it'll be good enough in most situations. Um, but anyway, so, so Na, it's 22.99, 35.45 for the chlorine, and we simply add those together, so a mole of NaCl would weigh 58.44. And the unit is grams per mole. Either uh, you can make it in the fraction form or like this. Um, IB is always going to show you with a little negative thing, but of course that's the same as grams over mole. So that's the molar mass unit. Um, another example, H2O. Here's one where you're going to use the molar mass of water a ton. You'll probably memorize it. You'll end up using it so much. But the only thing we have to remember to do is account for these subscripts so hydrogen, we look up its mass on the periodic table, it's 1.01, uh, rounded to two digits past the decimal, multiply it by 2, plus 15.99. Now, could you call oxygen 16? Yeah, sure. Um, it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, and, you know, arguably you should round it to 16, but it, it's not a huge deal. Either way, we're going to get 18.01 when we add that up. Um, another example, magnesium nitrate. So, again, we just need to look up all three of these things on the periodic table. We look up magnesium, and when I look it up, I see 24.31. We just got to remember to understand what's going on with this. Remember, the 2 is distributed, kind of, through the parentheses here. So, there's 2 nitrogens, and there's 6 oxygens. So, here you see me multiplying nitrogen's mass by 2, and here you see me multiplying oxygen's mass by 6. And we add that all up, and we get 148.29. Okay, so that's the basics of adding uh, molar masses up. I'm going to have you do it in just a second. If, if any of this wasn't clear for you, maybe back up the video, take a second look, see if you can figure out what I'm doing. Anyway, here, here are two that I'd like you to try. Go ahead and pause the video for a moment. Go ahead and add these up, and see what you get, and we'll check back in a second. So, welcome back. Hopefully you actually did that. You're only cheating yourself, ladies and gentlemen. I mean that sincerely, if you didn't do this. Um, it's an important skill. I need to make sure you know how to do it. So, one, uh, one carbon plus two oxygens. So, you see me multiplying oxygen's mass by two. We're going to get about 43.99. Here I'm showing it as a fraction, you know, just to mix it up a little bit. Um, again, Calling it 16 is fine. Of course, you're going to get a slightly different answer there if you do that. Uh, here is our second one. This would be lead 4 carbonate, would be what it's called. Um, but the lead on that periodic table that I saw, uh, by the way, sometimes molar masses will vary just very slightly depending on the periodic table that you look at. But the one that I just showed you has this as the mass, 207.2. Um, the parentheses, the 2 is distributed, so there's 2 carbons, 12.01 times 2. And then there's 6 oxygens, 2 times 3, so it's 15.99 times 6. 
So we should get about 327.2. I rounded it to a one digit past the decimal because we're adding here and um, we only got one digit past the decimal here. So not a huge deal, but uh, I went with one digit past the decimal there. And again, if you're having any trouble with these, back up the video, check it out again, phone a friend, ask me next class. There's a million things you can do to, to get this straight. Um, here's a Avogadro's number phone number picture that I enjoyed. You know, those little things where you can tear off a phone number down here. Um, just appreciated that. I thought I'd show that to you. Okay, so uh, while we're on the subject of molar masses, we need to talk about the molar masses of hydrates. Uh, what's a hydrate, you ask? Well, they're ionic substances that have water molecules trapped within them. So certain things, they might just look like a totally dry powder, but there's actually water inside of them. And, um, for instance, this is one called, it's called copper sulfate pentahydrate. So this has water in it, and it happens to look blue. That's, that's not always the case, so don't be fooled by that. And if you... You know, this powder would look totally dry. It's probably kind of hard to tell from this picture, but you certainly couldn't know in any way there's water in it. But if you do heat it, the water gets driven off, and it turns to what we call the anhydrous form. So this, if you heat this stuff, it turns white, and all the water gets driven off. Um, you can actually turn it right back to the hydrate again, like they're doing here, just by putting a couple of drops of water. And we'll, we'll probably do this um, in class at some point, so you guys can check that out. But anyway, when we do this, uh, you'll see how it's done. Um, we have to add in the appropriate number of water molecules to find the molar mass, because that water is definitely, you know, there's mass to the water, and we need to account for that. So, um, that's what the formulas look like for hydrates. They have this little dot, and they have the number of water. So again, this is called copper. Actually, it would be copper 2-sulfate pentahydrate. Penta because of, uh, you know, penta meaning 5, like pentagon pentagram. But, okay, so we're going to add up the mass of water. We already did that once today. It's 18.01. Um, so that's the mass of a water. And then I'm going to add up the mass of a CuSO4. So same thing we've been doing. Um, mass of copper right here from the periodic table. Mass of sulfur from the periodic table. Mass of four waters. So we get 159.58. So sometimes people see this dot and they want to do all sorts of weird things like um, multiply it by I don't know people do all <laughs> I've seen I've seen all sorts of ideas about how this should be done but here's what we really have to do we have to add the mass of the CuSO4 here and then we're going to add in the mass of five waters sometimes people will multiply by the mass of five waters and get a number that's way way too big but Basically, we got the mass of this, that's here. We got the mass of these five waters, that's there. And then we just add them together and we get 249.63. Um, and that's it, that's the mass of a hydrate. It's about as tough as it gets when it comes to adding up all our masses. So, uh, here's another example. Um, copper 2 chloride, it's actually... Uh, hexahydrate. Um, like I said, they're not always blue, and this one's kind of weird. This is the hydrate right here. When you heat it, it actually turns blue when there is no water in it. So people see that blue color sometimes, and they, they get confused, but you, you just really never know what the water's going to do and what sort of colors it's going to cause. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, um, probably uh, in year two. But But anyway, um, what I'd like you to do is take a second, pause the video here. Here's another example of a hydrate. See if you can find the mass of that hydrate. And if you do this, if you really do it, if you promise to really do it, you shall get a prize. All right, we're back. And I know you're all honest, young ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you really took the time to add this up and see if you got the right answer. So um, adding up the cobalt here adding up the chlorine, multiplying it by two since there's two of them, adding in six waters. I already added up the mass of the water. Uh, you know, we've done that several times today, multiplying that by six. So we get 237.89 grams per mole. So hopefully you came up with that answer. If you didn't, uh, ask me about it next time. We'll see if we can figure it out. So I said you'd get a prize. Would you believe there's not one 
but two at least. Maybe more. I don't know. I didn't check thoroughly. But uh, there's at least two Avogadro phone number joke pictures on the internet, and you're about to see number two. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, and we will uh, see you next time.